This is a recipe for a pitivier. Now, don't get all excited and run away and say, I can't make something with a name like that. It's just a fancy French name for a pastry. I wouldn't call it a cake or a coffee cake. It's a pastry made with puff pastry and classically with a frangipani, which is nothing more than an almond paste, which we're going to make right now. But we're also going to change this up a little bit. The classical is the puff pastry with the frangipani, and that's it. We're going to add pears to ours today because it just, pears and almonds just go so well together. So my little mini prep, I've got three and a half ounces of blanched uh, slivered almonds. It's so easy to make. I've got two and a half ounces of soft butter. It's very soft. I have a third of a cup of sugar and one egg yolk. Now, I'm going to put the little cover on it and just whiz it up. You want to make sure the almonds get ground fine. If you have to, keep scraping it down. works better in a bigger food processor. I thought I'd get away with using my mini prep today. It's not as powerful as my big one, but you know what? It's okay. We'll make it work. It's almost done anyway. I would say that is just about done. It's just a fine paste. Give it one more. Fine with me. All right, we're gonna put this aside and get our dough, our puff pastry, our bought puff pastry. I'm not gonna make my own today. I've made it before in the past. You've seen me make it. Today, for simplicity, I'm using bought puff pastry. So, be right back. I have my sheet of puff pastry. We're only gonna make two of these uh, pastries today. And I also have, this is a five and a half inch diameter bowl. Something this size or close to this size is what you will need. Doesn't exactly have to be that, but you want to be able to get four of the rounds out of this. So I'm going to actually roll this out just a little bit. go. Not a lot. I just want to get the little bit more so I can get four of these evenly. Let's see, that's about right. Yeah, I think I can get four out of that. And the scraps, you can just um, egg wash them and sugar them and they make great snacks. There we go. Put that aside. have a cookie sheet here that's lined with silpat or you can use parchment paper or grease it if you want to but just take this off that didn't cut all the way through if at any time it starts getting really soft just put them back in the refrigerator so like I said we're making two pastries so we need two bottoms and two tops so I will put my tops over here. Like I said, I will save those and make some really nice little cookies out of those. 
All right, now, here's that frangipani. I'm gonna put some on the bottom. There's actually more in here than I need, but I will put it in my refrigerator and use it for another day. So just a good, you wanna keep it away from the edges because that's where you're gonna seal up your edges. So just spread a good amount there. This stuff is absolutely delicious. Really, really wonderful. Now what I'm going to do, so I'm gonna get a, a peeler, hold on. And I'm going to peel. I've got these little, they're called Forel pears. They're really small, and I thought they were just really perfect size for this. You need one pear per pastry. If you don't want or can't find the small pears like this, what you can use is just a regular sized pear and just slice it into pieces to fit your pastry. Okay, get that out of here. And I cut them in half. And then what I do is I cut out the bottom little wedge Take that out, cut down here because you have that stem line that's kind of hard. Just pull it out. And then with a melon baller, you can just go in where the seeds are and pull that out. And I'm going to put one pair there. You could also um, make pear slices. Another good thing is you can do this with apples. I did it with apples the other day, and it was delicious. I've got another pear here which I peeled earlier. You can see it's already getting discolored a little. If your pear or your apple are on the hard side, these are not, these are fairly soft. Get yourself some white wine, some water, a little bit of sugar and a cinnamon stick, and poach your apple, peeled and you know, like this. Peel them and poach them in that liquid just until they start getting soft when you put a knife in. And then cool them completely and drain them because you don't want them wet. I'm putting the top on, I'm pressing down. You kind of have to pull it a little bit to stretch it because it's going over those pears. Now, normally, a petit vieille would be made as one large round. That is the classic way to make this. But I thought I would make two pastries, and each one of these pastries, I would say, would be a dessert for two or one hungry person. Okay. Now, the classic design, first of all, to make a hole in the center on top, it's sort of a little funnel. Now, you make a little wedge, just cut out a little edge, a little triangle, turn it around, do it the exact opposite. Then on the quarter side, this will make a beautiful design when the puff pastry puffs up in the oven. You'll see what I mean. And then in between each one, do two more. Just eyeball the spacing. Okay, one more. And then the classic design on a pitivier is to put a swirl. You start at that hole that you made in the top, and you kind of go down and swirl to the edge, not cutting all the way through, just marking it, if you will. And this will puff up with that marking. If you take more time than I do and really space it out evenly, it'll really look pretty, but this is gonna look pretty darn good as it is. So I will just continue and do this other one. And you don't have to watch me do the whole thing. And what I will do then is when I'm done doing the design, 
I will put these back in the refrigerator for about a half an hour because again, puff pastry likes to bake when it's cold. And before I put it in the oven, I will show you I'm going to put an egg wash and some sugar on it. So, see you back in a bit. All right, here's our pitivier, nice and cold. I've had it in the refrigerator for about an hour. You don't have to leave it in that long, but I did other things. Anyways, so they're out of there, and now I've got an egg wash, which is one whole egg and a tablespoon of water, which I've mixed up. And I'm going to brush these all over the top. This will make it nice and brown and good. My oven is preheated already at 375 degrees. And I'm going to bake these for approximately 40 to 50 minutes. You check it again, as I've said many times before, every oven is different. You want to check it, so start checking it at 35. And when it's nice and brown and puffed up and looks flaky, you know it'll be done. So these are going in the oven. Here are our pitiviers out of the oven. There's much too warm to cut right now. I'm gonna just remove them onto a wire rack to cool completely. And then later on, I will show you how to cut them open and eat them. So here are our pitiviers, they're nice and cool now. I'm gonna put a little bit of powdered sugar on the top of them, just for that little extra flavor and prettiness. Get a plate, put one of these on, I'm gonna cut it open for you. I use a serrated knife with this because I don't wanna smash down the uh, puff pastry. Hear that crunch? Remember we have the pear inside, and the frangipani. So you look, there's your pear, there's your frangipani. This stuff is delicious. I hope you try it, it's real easy.